Redstone has given Minecraft players the ability to create moving doors and complex contraptions with variable inputs. Many machines utilize redstone circuits to deal with the redstone signal logic, deciding which operations to perform with specific inputs. However, many players without the knowledge of how redstone blocks interact with each other often struggle building these circuits. So I'm here in the Block Exploration Videos lab to illustrate and explain all redstone circuits and logic gates. Before we begin, let's run through the fundamentals of redstone. A powered line of redstone dust will keep a signal for 15 blocks before running out. Using a redstone repeater will repeat the signal. A redstone torch provides power unless the block it's placed on is powered, then it'll turn off. I'll be using redstone lamps to clearly illustrate a powered line as they light up when they receive a signal. We start with transmission circuits. These are used to get power from point A to point B. The simplest form is a horizontal transmission across flat ground, but can also travel up or down redstone staircases. A redstone ladder uses transparent blocks like glass and slabs to let redstone climb vertically up or down. It's just as easy as it looks. There's also the torch tower, which powers the block above each torch. Be careful, however, as each torch reverses the signal, so you'll need to pay attention to if the final torch is on or off. Observer towers transmit a block update, such as redstone line turning on, up through the observers to the output. This is quick and compact, but expensive to craft in survival mode. This is a downward version of the earlier torch tower, where each torch powers the redstone dust to power the next torch. As explained at the start, the redstone repeater will repeat the signal, restoring redstone power into the back to a full signal from the front. It can also be set on up to a 4 tick delay. This is an instant redstone repeater using pistons that cuts out any delay. This is a two-way repeater that allows a redstone signal to be repeated from both directions. This utilizes the redstone comparator, which I give an in-depth explanation to in another video on my channel which you can watch by clicking the card. Put simply, when in compare mode the comparator will only output a signal if the signal from the back is stronger than the two sides. In subtract mode, the signal strength from the side is subtracted from the signal strength from the back and outputted from the front. Lastly, a diode allows a resonant signal to go in only one direction. This is most simply done with observers or repeaters. Now, probably the reason why you're watching this video, redstone logic gates. These are systems that return a number of outputs based on a number of inputs and the rules built into the circuitry. A NOT gate simply inverts a signal. When the lever is on, the signal is off, and vice versa. An OR gate will output a signal if any lever is activated, whether it's the left one or the right one. For example, both of these levers open the same door. A NOR gate is the opposite, where there will only be an output if none of the levers are turned on. An AND gate only outputs when both levers are turned on. For example, you need to flick both this AND this lever to open the door. A NAND gate is on when any of the levers are off but if both are on, the output is off. An XOR gate only outputs a signal if the inputs are different. If one lever is on and the other is off, there's an output. If they're both on or both off, there isn't. For example, a door may require you to choose either lever to open it, but not both. The XNOR gate is the opposite, in that it will only output a signal if both the inputs are the same. If they're both on or both off, the output is on, but if only one is on, there's no output. The final logic gate is very situational. The imply gate is always outputting a signal unless the first input is on and the second is off. You could use this as a lock for your signal, toggling the ability to turn the lamp on and off. Now let's move on to pulse circuits. Essentially, pulse circuits generate a resonant signal for a specific amount of time. The most basic example is a one tick pulse generator. Here, a button powers a redstone dust, sending the signal through a block into a repeater. But at the same time, a piston is powered, pushing the block out of the way. This means only one redstone tick can get through. This is useful for another circuit called a T flip-flop, whereby a button triggers a redstone signal on and off like a lever. This can also be achieved with an observer and a piston. A pulse limiter reduces redstone pulses that are too long. For example, a lever that permanently powers the line on will only send a two tick signal through this lamp, as the piston breaks the signal. A pulse extender makes the signal longer than an input. This is useful for making doors stay open for longer time than what a button can provide. A pulse multiplier outputs multiple pulses from every input. An observer will output a pulse when a redstone dust in front of it activates and another when it deactivates, doubling the input signal. This comparator clock is activated from the input, sending multiple pulses into the piston until the button turns off. This can be used to make dispensers shoot out many items from one button press. This version pulses a little bit slower, and this one even slower. A pulse divider requires multiple inputs until it produces an output. This is achieved by an item passing through multiple hoppers and a dispenser, all pointing into each other and powered by redstone. The output only lights up when the item inside reaches the dispenser. This allows you to create a machine that requires pumping up like a shower. 
Edge detectors give an output only when they detect a powered or unpowered input. For example, this is a rising edge detector. The lamp only pulses the moment the redstone line is powered on. This is a falling edge detector. This lamp only pulses once the line turns off. A dual edge detector is basically like a pulse generator, powering when the input line is either on or off. An inverted rising edge detector is always on, except for turning off for one pulse when the input is powered. You can use this to make a button that drops one block of sand or concrete powder at a time, like a sand timer. A pulse length detector only outputs a signal when there is a long enough input. When the button is pressed once, the line of repeaters reaches the second torch after the first one is turned back on. But if the button is held down, both torches are turned off and the lamp can be turned on. This is useful for combination locks where players are required to hold buttons down or detecting Morse code. Now we're getting into redstone clocks. These circuits will repeat a signal indefinitely, allowing you to have machines constantly running even after closing and reopening your world. Observer clocks are usually the smallest and quickest clocks you can make. A single observer with a line of redstone running from the back to its front will toggle on and off forever. Similarly, two observers facing into each other will output flashing impulses from either end. A repeater clock has two or more redstone repeaters facing opposite directions, passing a signal back and forth on repeat. Simply give the redstone dust an initial pulse, and the repeaters will continue it. Adding more repeaters will make the time between pulses longer. A hopper clock is composed of two hoppers facing into each other, continually passing an item between them and being detected by a comparator. Add a repeater to carry the signal strength further. An ether hopper clock, named after its inventor, has a variable delay between pulses, controllable by the number of items passing between the hoppers. The redstone block is pushed back and forth, powering a single redstone dust line. A Sethling hopper clock, named after its inventor, allows four outputs in a spiraling circle. Piston clocks are basically clunkier versions of the normal observer or repeater clocks. By pushing blocks into and out of the way of a powered redstone line, they toggle on and off repeatedly. There's also this design, which only works because of something called QUASI-CONNECTIVITY! Which is a whole other topic that deserves its own video. If you want a clock controllable via a lever, a comparator clock is a good way to go. By right-clicking the comparator to put it into subtract mode, this circuit will pulse very quickly when the back is powered. This version using two comparators is a little bit slower. Next up, memory circuits. These circuits store the outputs until they receive another signal telling them to change it. An RS NOR latch is a simple system that can be powered from either side, reversing the signal only once. Pressing one button will activate the output line, but won't deactivate it. The other button can turn it off, but not on. This is useful for an alarm that can be turned on via a button, but needs to be reset with another. There are many variations to this design that are useful with other configurations. A D latch is essentially a repeater locker. The first input can toggle the lamp on and off, but the second level will lock the first repeater into either an on or off state, unable to be changed. A D flip-flop is a more complicated version of this, which works as so. Lever A does nothing until lever B is turned on. Now lever A can turn on the lamp, but not turn it off. It is now locked. Lever B needs to be turned off to allow lever A to turn off the lamp, but it can't turn it back on until lever B is pulled. This makes me think of a dangerous machine that needs a safety switch before being activated. Now you've probably heard of this one before. The T flip-flop is a circuit that toggles on and off from one input. Essentially, this allows you to use a button as a lever. In this first example, a resonant signal unlocks the repeater and allows an extended pulse to go through. Then the repeater is locked again to keep it on. The reverse is done when the button is pressed again, turning the lamp off. This design uses a piston to push and pull a block over a redstone torch, only toggling the signal once the button is popped out again, or falling edge. Here, a T flip-flop uses a piston to create a one-tick pulse, pushing a block of redstone away and pulling it back in. These are linear and tileable, so you can have a long line of them together. Here's a compact 3x3 design that does the same thing. I like to use T flip-flops for large piston doors that need a solid signal to keep them open or closed. Using a button lets you open it from the outside, then close it from the inside. However, a recent update allows you to do the job of a T flip-flop in only one block. Dubbed the Cop Flop by Mumbo Jumbo on YouTube, a copper bulb activates a comparator when powered once, staying on until being powered again, so that makes things a lot easier. Copper bulbs can also be used as binary counters. When you power a line of bulbs connected with comparators, they all turn on. Then, powering the first one again will turn it off. This is like a binary value 1. Powering it again would turn the first one on and the second one off, displaying a 2. Then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. With just 4 bulbs, you can store 16 different states. Counters can get a lot more complicated than this, so if you're interested in building one with usable outputs, there are plenty of tutorials available. Coming to the end of the video, let's finish with some miscellaneous circuits you might find useful. Firstly, the ABBA circuit. 
This circuit has one input and multiple outputs, activating them in order one way, then deactivating in reverse order. This means you can have a moving scale animation using lamps. And this is a vertical ceiling version. Next are block update detectors. These are old circuits used before the observer was added, which essentially does the same thing. Remember when I mentioned quasi-connectivity earlier? It appears here with this circuit. The repeater is powering the piston, but it doesn't know it. Once a block is placed next to the piston, it powers on for one tick. This version uses a boat pressing into a wooden pressure plate. When the piston is updated, the sand and boat get pushed up before dropping back down to power the piston again. This design uses a slime block to generate a one tick pulse from a piston update. A multiplex circuit is a complicated system that allows you to transmit multiple signal strengths on one transmission line by using control line to choose which signal is transmitted. When the middle lever is off, only signal A activates, which has a weaker strength than B. B is only able to activate when the middle lever is on. This piston mux makes it easy to see what's going on. When the piston is retracted, lever A is able to send a signal through the block. But when the piston is active, only lever B can power the line. Because it's powering a longer wrist on dust, its signal must travel further to the lamp and is one block weaker. A demultiplexer is basically the opposite. It allows you to power multiple outputs from one input using a control switch to swap between the two. This design uses a hopper and dropper to switch power between two adjacent torches. You can also build a random number generator with redstone, utilizing the randomness of droppers. A comparator outputs a signal relative to how full the container is, so a hopper holding one unstackable item, such as a shovel, will output a comparator signal 3. A hopper holding an item stackable to 64 will only output 1. Having one in each dropper, which will randomly dispense one into the hopper with each button press, will randomize the signal strength output between two states. This can then be extended to a 3 state output using snowballs too, which can only stack to 16. In the most basic form, redstone circuits are logical and easy to follow. But when applied to a massive scale, these same circuits can all work together to build something as complex as a functional calculator, like this one made by Matt Batwings. So many amazing things have been created by the redstone community, really showing the limitless potential of redstone. But sometimes, all you really want is a fancy locking door. Thanks for watching! Click here for another video and hit a subscribe. Have an awesome day!